Okay, it's 6.30, so let's open the September 26, 2023 meeting of the Town of Rutland Planning Board. Uh, I have a request to take uh, our agenda out of order and skip down to item six. Any objection? None. <clears throat> item six or five? Six. Six. Oh, yeah, tree clearing. Okay, on the new agenda. On the new agenda, yes. Um, is that the right one? That's the right one. Yeah. Yep, and Chris well, is here for that one. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So, uh, the grid petitioned the town to put some new poles in on Hillside. That was okayed. In order to put the poles in, they have to trim some trees. I went and looked at the trees and that they had marked. And most of them are very close to the road and pretty and in rough shape on the bottom. I told them to cut them because they had they need them to expand that power there. Then I guess somebody started saying something about a stone wall and then it, it escalated to the trees and the scenic route. I didn't know it was a scenic road, but if you want to look this. The few trees that are left, they did most of the job. But these are the three trees that are left there. They still want to take down? You know, yeah, they still need to take them down. You can yeah. see that the... They're rotted out the bottom? Yeah, the there's a little salt on the side of the road, and they're only a foot and a half off the road. How their bark's going, too. So they're dangerous anyway. Yeah. So that's why I looked at them, and most all of them, the trees that they took down were within a few feet of the road, three or four feet, and most all of them, the bases look like that. So I figured it was not that big a deal. Oh, jeez. But yeah, these are, yeah, these, you know, they're uh, dead. They suck. So I'm, once they <laughs> said something, somebody went over and said something, the tree company decided they we're going to pull out of there until so and, and I so I yep. said, yep, that's fine. And I got a hold of Austin to make it. And, uh, let's, let's try to get this square, squared away the right way. So do we need to set a hearing with the tree warden? I will set. Oh, yeah. We have done it for the 10th, not realizing that's election day. Okay. And MGO prevents uh, specifically planning board public hearings on election day. So the next soonest date we would be able to do it is October 24th. Do you want to um, I don't need a I don't know. I don't know how many. You mentioned that there weren't very many trees left. There's right, three. That have to be cut. pictures of them right there. So I guess what I'm requesting is that. The trees they already cut, there's no sense in having a hearing on. And these are dangerous trees too close to the road, and they need to be taken down for them to do it anyway. So I'm kind of hoping you let me just have them finish the job and so the grid can go on with the power job. They can they make an same. emergency motion to do these trees don't because... Have that, <laughs> don't have the authority. Yeah, that's... Got to have a public hearing with yeah. the tree warden. Yeah. I am the tree warden. He is the tree warden. But there has to be yeah. public hearing advertised. Yeah. I thought there was some kind of an exception in there for well, I have this that I copied off the page of Mass General Law. Good. For tree wardens. Chris, read it to us, sir. Oh, well. Hold on. <laughs> you got to put on the CVSs. <laughs> this says public trees that endanger the public or public property. The highlighted part is a hearing, chapter 87 states that a hearing is not required for trees that the tree warden has deemed to obstruct, endanger, hinder, or incommode persons traveling. They, also, they may also include trees infested with insects or disease. And that last one is And the and last, last one is what one. you got right now with disease trees. Yeah. So, and they're also one foot off the pavement. They're dangerous trees. Yep. My question, if I may, yep. are you saying that Chapter 87 has been complied with because you made determination that necessary? Your bylaw says no shall be given, plan board shall be held in, con uh, in conjunction with those 
held by the tribunal and acting under MGO 87, the consent plan board to uh, a proposed action shall not be regarded as inferring consent by the tree warden, vice versa. The plan board decision shall contain a condition that no work shall, should be done until all applicable provisions of the public shade tree law, NGO 87, have been complied with. It says compiled, but complied. That's 87. Yours yeah. was what number? 87. He was 87. Yeah, in the section I mean, out of 87. Um, the problem is, I think you still have to have a public hearing. Um, can, but we, can we pull Richard an emergency public hearing? It doesn't say anything about that. Because two weeks would put but us the, like on the 11th or 12th. But the question is. No, it would be too late now for me to get it out for that week. Damn. There is no specification that I can see as to what constitutes the notice of a public hearing. Therefore, the question is, could you hold a special meeting and have a public hearing posted at town hall or advertise or whatever for that special meeting for the purpose of just just specifically Just for the tree issue. The tree on I'm fine with it. Friday. I guess we probably should look at what's our <laughs> earliest date we can pull if we have a. Not, not, the only thing this week would be Friday. Has to be. No, oh shit. Has to be it. Advertised twice in newspaper. Mm -hmm. That's two weeks minimum. I just pulled the advertisements actually. Uh, advertisement. Required by statute. Given notice. But you pulled it to on the tenth. Would y'all be able to hold a meeting on Thursday the eleventh? No, because it would be too late. It would have had to have been. Well, are you talking about a public hearing? Yeah. Um, I would have had to have had it posted and a butter notification received by tomorrow to be able to do that. Ironically enough, the butter notifications did go out for the tenth. I wasn't able to catch them in time, but I was able to stop the uh, publication in the newspaper. Dear Mr. Ad Hoc, please take this uh, bylaw and add into it. <laughs> for what if we did the 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 thirteenth that Friday, Friday the thirteenth? Do we can we pull that off, Tamika? Um. Yes. I'm just trying to get it so we can have this and you can get your guys you know, back it, in. It doesn't make any difference to me. The grid, but when we have dangerous trees and the grid's willing to pay to take them down, that is what I like. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any tree budget, you know. But the only one they're holding up is the people who are building a, who, the people building a house on that lot. They, they, they need power. We're just going to make the grid just Tell take them go back much longer, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't mind doing an hour meeting on a Friday if it's just specifically for the tree issue and there's nothing else on the agenda. Just a second. Let's see. Let me back this up. Subsection 4 of your bylaw. Within the public right-of-way of designated roads, the tree warden or his designee may approve the cutting or removal of up to three trees per 200 linear feet of right-of-way. Within the public right-of-way of designated roads, the following activities shall require written approval of the planning board, tearing down painting or destruction of stone walls, the cutting or removal of trees, the scope of which is outside the responsibility of the tree warden as defined above, Repair, maintenance, reconstruction, paper. So there's three trees left, right? Good. They're within the right of way of the designated road, correct? Yes. Yeah. Falls into it. You, well, you couldn't approve the ones that have been cut. Well, they've already been cut. There's only three that has been <coughs> approved. As I read subsection 4A, <laughs> 
you could approve those three trees. Okay. With the planning board's permission? You just have to do written. We have to do a written. I'm guessing we got to send an email no, it to you. it doesn't say anything writing. It says he has the right for three the trees. Right of anything right of Desney Road, the tree warden or his Desney may approve the cutting or removal of up to three trees per 200 feet of right of way. Is that the scenic or is that just uh, the scenic? The scenic? Oh, right. Okay. That's the one I'm now, concerned with at that. Now, the other trees ought to have been cut. That would be construed as a violation because it didn't get approval beforehand. And it says the building inspector, tree warner, others designated by the site board may issue, may issue a citation. Hmm. So that's up to you, rather than anyone issue the citation. I'm, I'm okay with that. Yes. Yeah. First off, they're a nuisance. That's the biggest problem. Yeah. Yeah. And that tree you showed me that's six inches off of the road. <laughs> Your snow guys must have a fun day with that one. I was going to say, they're kind of nicked. It's not good for plows. It's not good for people walking and with traffic. It's not yeah. good for anything having the trees that close to the road. Yeah. But just the word in the bylaw says... He can prove up three trees. And doesn't need a... Uh, within 200 feet. Two, three trees. Within 200 linear feet. Per 200 linear feet of right away. Are they all, Chris, within 200 of each other? Or are they all the way down the road? Um, these three that are left are probably, they're probably within 100 feet of each okay. other. Okay, you're fine. There you go. As I read this, they're, they're, you're fine. <coughs> they're fairly close to the end of the job. I don't even think we need a motion for that because no. based on that, it's It says your he call. has the right. Yeah, that's what I say. It's your call. All right. Just if, I know you want to dot because I want. I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. You want to dot the eyes and cross the T's, late, baby. You know? Know? It's, it's already too late, I guess, for not telling telling you guys. But there's a couple of questions for Chris. One: Are all the trees, are, are those three trees, within the um, purview of the? Uh, 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 jurisdiction of the tree warden, yeah. right? Okay, and all within 200 feet of the right of way, of linear feet of the right of way, um, and they're within the public right of ways, therefore, yeah, he would have the right to authorize those three trees to come down. And then it's within his dis discretion, or building commission's discretion, or such other designated person as to whether or not to issue a citation for the other. Please. Right. Good? Yep. So awesome. I can get a hold of them and have them finish the job. Yep. Yep. I think so. About this That's your decision. You want right? it? No. <laughs> I'll hold it for the next time. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Chris. Take care, Chris. <coughs> okay. Back to our regular agenda, which would be. Uh, August third minutes, which once again we can't do anything. So that was wrong. On to the minutes of September twelfth. I went through them. I didn't have anything. I, I make a motion to accept September twelfth minutes. I did it. I second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. A and R. Ruben Botany, Ridge Road and Wachusett Road. I abstain. This one's got to be easy. Very easy. All right. I'm hoping for it. Very this, easy. You know, Julian, this is the exception to the rule because we're supposed to have a little bit more time. Than Thank you very, very much. <laughs> I'm doing the approval for me in November. Thank you, you Jerry. I'm interim town planner for another month, another four weeks. So we have your name, so consulting is an option. <laughs> Doing. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I don't want to come up 
Alright, there we go. So, how we're doing is reshaping the lot lines. This line is the original lot line, it's staying the same. These three lots are affected, so this was one, two, three. We're just reshaping lot one to look like this, lot two to look like that, and lot three to look like that. 200, 200. 200, over 200. Yep. Acre and a half, acre and a half, acre and a half. Well, actually, a little more. So it's just a reconfiguration of, of the shape for various other permitting purposes. <laughs> No not creating any more lots or not creating anything different. Just no wetland access problems or anything like no. that. No, no. And this is all stone wall here. It's all stone wall. Okay, ridge isn't a scenic, is it? No, I don't believe it is. So. Okay. And there are actually there are breaks in the wall mm -hmm. from the farm trucks, you know. But all right, yeah, yeah. But it's the old lines, the dotted the dotted line, line is the old line, okay. and the old shape. To be a triangle, and this was another triangle, and that was a. So we had to reshape it for. Um, proposed houses, is it which direction? Okay. Going. Like on that spot? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Okay. And their addresses all be Ridge Road, so that's good. Oh, uh, Ridge Road, they all actually already have house numbers, but they just be reshaped. Okay. Richard, any thoughts? No. Very <clears throat> yeah, straight Got French acreage. It's hard to look at. It's not seen road. It's. Uh, yep. Just need to make a motion to. Uh, to endorse. And find that it's it quali meets the qualifications for endorsement and approve and authorize endorsement. I uh, make a motion to endorse. Uh, what's, what is this? Uh, William Zotley and Carla Diffuse, co-trust of the Margaret H. Zotley Marital Trust, A&R <laughs> um, &R plan, as it meets uh, frontage and acreage. Ever proposed A&R? Second. Once again, any discussion? These are the estate lots, right? Nope. Okay. Stay lots of way down. Yeah, way further down. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'll ask that check so I can give it to Richard when he can. Check number 149. Thanks. He's going to ask that, so I'm going to. This was a money maker for you. No, no extra lots, and you got money for it. <laughs> That's a money maker. Anything further? Nope. All in favor? Aye. 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 It goes on the check for the favorite thing. <laughs> Time, whatever you need. Like always. I'm going to get back in the habit of folding these. Back up all the way. Yeah, 
haven't had anyone sign the backside of the Mylar. Not yet. <laughs> oh, that would be fun and games when you get to the Registry of Deeds. It's pretty yeah. rough. No. Like the, um, so if I the one thing I learned the on, on the Forest down. Hill subdivision, I didn't know this. I've only been, I guess I haven't been doing it long enough, but it's only been like 42 years. But you couldn't record the plan yeah. without a municipal 20, liens uh, six. certificate. What? You can't report a subdivision plan without a municipal lien certificate. You can, well, a form A is okay, but not a subdivision. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so where do you have to get the... Just get to go. Get the Show that you paid your taxes. Oh, okay. But form A's don't count, so I don't really know what that means, but... Other than the trip for nothing. <laughs> and parking. Uh, we yeah. keep the time. Heaven sticks to you guys. Yeah, we're all right. We'll all right. be good. It doesn't smear. No, oh, yeah. it won't. Get the heat stamp yeah. or something. Perfect. The elastic. Just grab that elastic. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Okay, next. Tell Dick you can come back now. I can. Okay. Hey, uh, this is for your records. It was check number 149. One second. Okay. Item. Ooh, hearing, special state lot. Special permit for state lot 101 Glenwood Place Extension. Tim, what? How much? 500? Yes. Yeah, for the three lots. Okay. And this is. everything the big thing I always look for is cannot be subdivided further <laughs> that's there oh that's just showing us the distance I remember that yeah, yeah. any comments from the board questions Setbacks on there, the house is on there, the 50 foot wide access. Um, I need room to grow cattle up. Oh, yeah, I can't wait. Nowadays, you, you have to nowadays. Yeah. yeah, 42 acres exceeds the five acre requirement. <laughs> By a little. Yeah. <laughs> it's got the 50 foot frontage. 70 at the opening, which is bigger than 50. Over 200 feet for the setback for the house. I don't see anything outside the bylaw. Extra pen. It's pretty dry property, too. You know, oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Nothing from the planning board? I don't. Anything from the public? I hear silence. <laughs> <laughs> anybody? Oh, you said public. I was going to say, anybody up on the... We got three people, two iPhones, and a Scott. 
Haven't heard of him. Well, paperwork's all filled out correct. Mm -hmm. Signed. Signed. It's a nice piece of land, so. Thank you, yeah. yeah. Lucky. Oh, Can't that was one thing. Did there. we get a planning on it for check number for this one? I don't remember that. Okay. But I do have it recorded. Yeah, fees were paid last time. Yeah, or with the application. Well, hearing nothing further, I have a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 I have a motion to grant the special permit. So moved. With standard template. Conditions. Well, it's going to be standard if I don't say anything. Okay. <laughs> no. you, just, you need to specify if, if, if there's going to be anything. Conditioned. Yeah, if there's any conditions, otherwise it gets yeah. Yeah. approved, no conditions. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Can I amend yours with standard conditions for a special permit for estate lots? You're thinking about it. Well, okay, I want 16 trees. <laughs> <laughs> the only condition I would ask is street lights. Yeah, there you go. Knock it off. <laughs> there you go. Inside blocks. Inside, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Got enough room. A little landing strip with some nice street lights. Well, that would be nice. <laughs> That's the only thing I'd add is just uh, standard conditions on the special permit. Do I hear a second after that? Well, I'll second that part of it. Go ahead. <laughs> Any discussion? Standard. So does, is Tim making a motion now and Dick seconding? That's it. Or, okay. Very done. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we will have the decision written as soon as we reasonably can. This week. This week. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Then we'll very sign well. everything. It all stays with you guys. To, yeah, so, yep. 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 Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank right. you very much. Nice. I appreciate right. it. That's nice. Especially that other piece of property right beside his. Never be built on. Yeah. 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 Awesome. <laughs> so we probably should skip four since I, I don't I don't see well, Mr. Coming. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be a little bit late. So he did ask if he. Yeah, we can move on. Five Hilltop Estates. Uh, it says review and sign definitive subdivision. Uh, we had, uh, had a little discussion with Richard. Yes. Uh, about this. And since there are, among other things, some minor corrections that need to be made to the set of plans, and we don't have, we have received a homeowner's. Uh, the document. I can just briefly, the process for subdivision should be the board acts on the defendant, just makes a defendant decision. It gets filed to the town clerk. There's a 20 day appeal period. During the 20 day appeal period, the applicant should be submitting all documents that are conditions of the approval easements, the covenant agreement, the homeowner association. Any other thing that's details in there, as well as any revisions to the revised plans. 
you should be making those. The board would then, once the appeal period has lapsed, or there's an, if there is an appeal, that appeal is resolved to the applicant's approval, i.e. the approval stands, then he submits the plans for plan board endorsement that we then endorse at a public meeting. Um, so tonight is just to act on the decision itself. And I took the decision that Tamika did and met with Clea last Thursday and because uh, he had questions and comments and for his, he wants some clarification and so I rewrote that based on his, my understanding of his comments. And what I have for you is that revision. Plus, I also have added a, one little, two little statements. One is that uh, under item 21, the last sentence says, in addition, during construction, all local, state, and federal law shall be followed. I added, including, but not limited to those regarding noise. I don't suggest that those are only state and federal laws that have to be adhered to, so whatever laws apply. And then, in regards to the waivers, uh, you need to make a determination that uh, grand waivers is in the public interest and not inconsistent with the subject of the law. So I added a statement to that effect in the uh, decision as well. Uh, and but this won't be released until the HOA is is worked out, correct? The decision gets done. Correct. You don't sign the plan until until everything's submitted. I'm good with that. Uh, the, uh, he has spent HOA. He has spent easements. He's got to submit the covenant agreement. All those for you to look at during the 20-day appeal period. He could wait later, but most people did during that 20-day appeal period. I had one project where developer used a new attorney. It was a new developer, new attorney, and the attorney had not done subdivision. It took them a year to get done. <laughs> yeah, because that's, Richard, that's the only thing I wanted to make sure of is since this HOA is going to be different than anyone we've ever done in this town, I really want KP to go through this with a fine-tooth comb. Mm -hmm. So once they... Um, uh, once you make this decision, it gets filed with the town clerk, and then Clea can submit the uh, documents, and you have those submitted to your uh, town council if you wish to have them, have them take a look at them. Yeah. Yes, do you mo mo need a motion to sign the decision? Motion to approve the decision as written. Okay, motion to approve. I'm making a motion to approve the decision as written for Hilltop Estates Definitive Subdivision. Second that. Uh, I'm just kind of curious. Oh. No problem. <clears throat> um, so we, sorry, uh, discussion or awesome. Can I give a second? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, he's got 20 days essentially to get this all back to us, or we've. He has more than that, but you can't act on it in less than 20 days. Okay. Uh, the, the provisions that once the decision is signed and filed the town clerk, yeah. a 20 day clock starts then. Even if you had everything ready tomorrow, you couldn't yeah. sign it till at least that 20 day clock is expired. Uh, uh, so the town will have it in its hands tomorrow yeah. if we sign okay. it tonight. The decision be filed, he'll have it. And um, when you sign the plan, will largely depend on when he submits the documents to you. Yeah. Okay. If uh, I suspect they've got things already cranking on it, okay. and I would expect the documents to be submitted much sooner than 20 days. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further discussion? 
All in favor? Aye. 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 We need to sign this now. Yep, that's just a page. Oh crap, I gotta borrow some of Yeah, I got a red pen and that's the last thing I'm gonna sign with. <laughs> Pick your wrong pen when I left the house. Thank you. Seven standalone energy storage facility bylaw. Review the discussion of the proposed bylaw. Public hearing is scheduled for October 10th, which is not true uh, since we cannot hold a public hearing. Back June last year, talking to you guys about the subject matter, going through some options as far as protecting the town and creating some standards um, for an energy storage bylaw. Uh, at the time, you all had been working on, I think, your general bylaws and going through those, and you had a heavy workload. Yep, yeah, three bylaws. We had to get done by last town meeting. Yeah, right. So fall wasn't achievable last year. Um, and then in the spring, that was right around when David George had left. So things kind of fell apart there. So I just wanted to get back in front of you guys. Um, I met with Austin and um, Fire Chief over here um, a couple weeks ago now, anyway, um, and reviewed materials and just trying to figure out a path forward with the lack of a town full-time town planner and guiding the board. Um, so I'm back here just to talk about the draft language that I had supplied. Um, the language had come out of Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Um, that was drafted through a state grant um, that a few towns a little west of here were involved in. Um, and that language has since been used by some of those towns for warrant as well. I believe, I believe it was Ware that had used it for... Uh, their spring board. Um, so the language is, is, and if you're looking at that, it's uh, not that. So that, the language that you're looking at here, um, that is the language that I had proposed last year utilizing the solar energy bylaw that you guys have in town. Um, the more current version of the bylaw is this. I don't have copies for everybody, I apologize, but um, this is a all-encompassing, fully detailed... This this one? Correct. That's the one. Yep. Um, fully detailed that goes through uh, standards for development as well as safety, um, construction design, monitoring, um, and then the modification and removal of said projects as well, um, decommissioning. Um, so really, what this bylaw does, uh, this bylaw, mo this this language is being put forth as model bylaw language for the state for municipals, municipalities to utilize. Um, it's currently also being looked at by the state as well as implementing abroad through all the planning commissions. Um, so this breaks down battery energy storage systems into really three tiers. So tier one being at 
a resident um, system that would be connected to your solar on your roof if fire code so allowed. Um, so the tier one is your 20 kilowatt hour or more up to probably 250 is typically where your bylaws go with generators um, um, in your bylaws. So typically you won't see anything bigger than 20 kilowatts, 25 kilowatts in a house, um, depending on the size of the system. But tier one being residential, tier two being um, an energy storage system that's connected to your three phase distribution circuit. So that's within your local grid structure. Uh, that's benefiting your local customers, that's creating resiliency and reliability throughout the grid structure um, and really allowing the solar that's being produced right now on all those lines to be absorbed into the batteries for later use. Um, Roughly what kind of kilowatts on that? Kilo, uh, so that's up to, I have 10 megawatts in here. Oh, Ken, Ken Comey out of Pioneer Valley Planning Commission had produced this. Um, but I had been giving him some information just as far as like the national grid side of things and what they're looking at and what they allow for connection. Um, technically they allow up to 10 megawatts on a single project, but the grid is really leaning more towards five as being a standard project size as we're finding out. That's confusing is <clears throat> tier one says 20 kilowatt hours and greater and has no cap on it. True. Yeah, and, and tier, tier two is 20 kilowatt hours up to 10 megawatt. Um, can have, yeah. Well, and again, this is language to be looked at, right? But, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I know that he has know, that there either. I know Ken well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he worked for quite some time um, on this project, probably about a year's worth of time, so, anyway. Uh, logically, one would have thought Tier one would go from one level to another level, and then tier two would go from that level up to one. Agreed. But that's not the way this is. So that's confusing to me. Agreed. So me tier well. two would be now three phase from 20 kilowatt to 10 megawatts? You're, you're I was, ruffling. It, it should be 250 kilowatts, realistically. Yeah, because you can't do 20 yeah. kW in a three phase. <laughs> and yeah. tier one should have a cap at 250. Yeah. yeah. That's how I was. That's, which that's how I actually wrote it out here. <laughs> yeah. I, I, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm sure that's what Ken was thinking too when he wrote this. This is exactly what he had sent me, so I'm just passing it along to the planning board. I wish I saw that. Hmm. Okay. You'll get us copies for everybody, right? Definitely. I have a OneDrive. I believe Tamika has the... Don't worry about it. It's all good. No, I, so it's okay. This is just discussion to further talk, right? So I have a OneDrive that Tamika has um, okay. that she could she provide you guys. It has a bunch of information just aside from this bylaw. Um, just pertaining, really well. Yeah, just pertaining to some systems that we're, as a company, utilizing. Mm -hmm. It's not to say that the next company is going to utilize the same system, but it's just good information to see how things look as far as documentation. Yeah. Um, so, and then we get to the tier three battery storage. That's uh, your bigger systems, um, 99 megawatts or bigger, typically, um, that are connected to your transmission lines. Those are typically sited very closely to substations for ramp rate reasons and all that. Um, those have a requirement. Um, all these have requirements to meet the electrical code and building codes as well. Um, I don't think we have a tier three. And we get two substations. Mm -hmm. We got a north and yeah. south substation. Mm -hmm. The grid, the grid operates. Tucked yep. in the woods, or no? Actually, no, no. No. sitting right on the roads. Yeah, yeah. The ones over by the uh, yeah. line, right? Treasure Valley. Yeah, yeah. Treasure, Treasure Valley's where. And the other than on Central Tree. Yeah, and I would note that the Paxton property would not be able to house battery storage. On the Paxton side, where the substation right. is, that would never be able to have battery storage because it's a municipality, yep. and you can't have it in there okay. in their territory. Um, so really, this this. Bylaw goes through just like any other your ordinary bylaws. It goes through your applicability, um, your general requirements, your safety standards. In looking at section 1.3 and the applicability, um, there's a few different scenarios that they put forward, right? So there's a building integrated battery energy storage system, which would be yours 20 to 250 kilowatt systems. Um, again, depending on fire code and the AHJ having authority on allowing those systems within homes 
or buildings in general. Um, so that would be your. I got a quick question for the big guy over here. Does NFPA have they addressed this yet? With uh, yes, they have. So, unfortunately, the residential piece of this yeah. is already happening in this town without a bylaw. So I know that. that so that's I would say called one, Tesla. <laughs> yeah. So that and Generac is the, the yeah. two big ones. Um, so almost ten percent of all solar projects in town residential are going with battery storage in their in their basements. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Building integrated also allows for behind the meter operations as well, but not with solar um, and like a commercial um, industrial building. So they can, you can charge off the grid during low cost hours and then you can use that energy later instead of paying your um, high, high transmission lines with their peak shave, uh, essentially peak shaving with the system. Um, B is co-located co battery energy storage systems, which I don't believe you guys have any of those in town, um, which would be a solar plus battery. I know uh, my company had permitted some projects some years back, um, and National Grid kind of put a stop to those projects just with the grid, the grid structure out here uh, being pretty inundated with solar and, and uh, all that. So that allows for the co-location, um, on-site solar with the generation, which means that somebody could come back to you guys as a board um, and, produce, and produce plans to add an energy storage system to a solar field. I will add that nine times out of 10, when you're building a solar field and developing a project like that, you're, util you're utilizing every square foot of no the room. property. And there's really no room. So that's really more towards new solar fields that are coming out, mainly being a requirement through the SMART program and National Grid and EverSource and all that stuff. Potentially somebody could acquire additional property and adjacent could. to it. They could, yeah. To co-locate it, it would have to be combined as one parcel. Right. Yep. a and &R combines it. And, yeah. yeah. Yep, it's a possibility for sure. Yep, and they just have to run from the building that that's tied into the grid yep. over to the battery. So it's possible. Definitely possible. Yep, and there are some companies out there doing that, mostly down southeastern Mass right now. Um, as we as all these energy, um, all these solar fields get kind of out of date, ten years plus, developers start looking at trying to figure out what they could do for the future. Whether that means making the field a little bit smaller and putting better panels on it and adding battery storage or what have you, they're just possibilities that we're talking about. Right, we're almost there now, aren't we? I'd imagine. Mm. Treasure Allers, 2015. Mm -hmm. no. mm. um, item C here is battery energy storage not associated with on-site solar. So it's just a standalone project. Um, again, we're talking now we're talking like tier two project, right? Or a tier three project, depending on how the board so wishes to utilize this bylaw in, in allowing certain systems. Um, so this system would solely take energy off of the three phase lines during times of solar production, and it would discharge during times of high demand. There are, so. Peakers. Yeah, in the yeah. clean peak energy uh, standard speaks to, it's a, CM, it's a CMR, so um, that speaks to energy storage in general. Um, and set standards kind of as far as what they what they like to see. So co-located, standalone. Um, there's three factors that a system can qualify under um, Clean Peak. So in order to get credits like your SREC credits and stuff like that, you've got to follow the, the Clean Peak standard. So you can actually get the CPS credits, which they're utility companies, um, which they're required. The utility companies are becoming required to utilize. So. That's something that's coming in. Uh, this is all part of the 2030 goals um, in Massachusetts and thereafter. Um, I believe in Massachusetts set an energy storage goal of like 2,500 megawatts by 2025, which I'm not sure that we're going to reach at this point in time. Um, um, but anyway, um, for the applicability, this also covers your modifications and retrofits to your system. So retrofitting being coming back, adding it to a solar field, uh, coming back after 10, 15 years of a standalone system uh, to put new equipment on it, say the batteries are kind of getting to their age and technologies may be changed, they'll be back in front of you as a board to vet that project once again. Um, system capacity at that time um, 
could be changed through the National Grid or Eversource or Unitil process. Um, so if I put in a five megawatt project today and came to you in 15 years, I may want to try and put a 10 megawatt project because National Grid's looking at things differently and maybe the industry has evolved a little bit more. Again, back in front of you for that. Um, so the, that covers, so section 1.3 and 1.2 cover pretty much your definitions, your applicability. Um, general requirements are, are um, special permit for everything um, as far as standalone. Um, and then we've got a whole list of application materials uh, that would be in addition to whatever you all have in your bylaws already for special this permit. This actually says is special permit and or site plan and view. Yep. Site plan and view would be by right. Um, yeah. Depending, yeah, I mean, so, there's so a lot of times. it's not all special permit. Yeah. I'm just, I'm looking, I'm trying to compare this to your existing solar. Definitely. And small scale solar would be 250 and below. And so it sounds like with the exception of the uh, uh, building integrated, Hmm. They would fall under the large scale. Yeah. Building in grade looks like it would could be a small scale. Tip would be small scale, I would imagine. Yep. So that that's maybe how you look at it is that the small scale tier one maybe falls within what's allowed in small scale solar and tier and tier two would be where it's conex box. Scale. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, definitely beneficial to look at what you have for language now and look at this and compare it. You can always change anything you'd like in here, right? right. I mean, this is just draft model, model example. Um, so this goes through, I'm not going to bore you guys with all these. There's like yeah, you 30. Should, you, 30. Should, you should read them. I can. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with the requirements for the application material, um, site typically, site plan, you've got your existing conditions, you're finding your lot lines, your existing structures, your trees, your wetlands. Um, you have a plan that has contours every 10 feet. Um, B, uh, the proposed landscape and site um, of the site, including grading, vegetation, clearing, and planting, um, including total acreage of disturbed area, total vegetation cleared, not including mowed fields. Uh, trees with 20 inches or greater within the project parcel should be identified to determine tree loss. Uh, again, property lines, um, location dimensions of buildings, location of the proposed structures for the battery energy storage and any accessory structures that might be there um, for that system. So typically what you would have in a fenced in area for a standalone project would be X amount of um, cabinets, battery storage cabinets. Most of these are becoming purpose-built NEMA-rated containers. We're not retrofitting container uh, Connex boxes any longer. They're, these are pre-manufactured. There's separation for power, and there's protection zones with firewalls separated by a certain amount of feet, and it depends on the manufacturer. So not every application that comes in front of you is going to be the same. It might not be utilizing the same technology of lithium ion batteries. Um, it might not be the same kind of containerized system. It might be liquid cooled or air cooled. The industry's going liquid cooled purpose built containers, um, typically around a half a megawatt in a container um, for fire safety reasons and separation of power. And that would be a robust system. We, there are systems out there that have two megawatts worth of batteries in one in one Connex box style container. Um, so there are things to look out for and be aware of as you're vetting projects through the process and understanding that there are five or seven different types of lithium ion batteries. Um, predominantly the industry right now is working with lithium iron phosphate. So <coughs> it's a safer technology uh, than most of um, chemistry, than most of the other lithium um, compound, uh, battery compounds. So with the iron phosphate is better uh, stability, uh, better charge rates uh, or uh, capacity to hold and less, less likely to, or yeah, less likely to 
go into thermal runaway because of protections and the way that the battery interacts with itself. Um, so again, you just want to be aware of the multiple different types of technology that are out there for battery storage, is all. Um, there's, mm. no, there's a standard, but it's free free play within that standard, you're saying? or uh, There's or, no real standard, really. It, it's it's just technology in general. So, chi yeah. so China and overseas, they've been using LFP for a long while. We are more... Uh, behind the game with nickel manganese cobalt, uh, things of that yeah, nature. That's not going into well, and I guarantee <laughs> yeah, that. No, I, and the, that's the things that <laughs> Tim happening. would be great for you guys, right? I mean, he knows about this stuff as well. And um, there are certain chemistries that are more prone say, for fires. Yeah, and fires they're, and they're more sensitive to for... heat and stuff it, and those things as well. Mm -hmm. um, that's why foam, that's why everything set does it. <coughs> You got to have a foam product because you cannot put out a fi a battery fire with water. It's got to be a foam product to get the oxygen out of there and seal everything off. I think I'm right. Thing that's there's there's a lot of pieces there's a lot of pieces to it. <laughs> um, not to interrupt, but obviously um, units are pretty big. Or, Say most people are going to want to build one of these on their backyard. You see it a lot in other towns. Um, so right now, standalone projects in Mass, um, the ones that you'll see in Massachusetts right now are in your municipalities. Um, so, so Sterling C1. Light, yeah. Sterling Light Department has one on Chalksite Road. Um, Towns and Light has Town Building or Townsend has one on Bridge Street. Um, there's one down in Taunton, North Reading. Um, Many of the municipalities through in 2016 through the ACES grant um, from the state it was to proof to prove the proof of concept for today, what we're talking about today. Yeah. Um, so the municipalities were able to prove proof of concept of battery storage um, in being able to generate power or consume power to release it to cert at certain times. What is the um, dimensional? Let's say, can or can you translate? Uh, yes. 250 watt, uh, watt into, or 10 megawatt into a physical dimension size in terms of sure. uh, yeah. height, depth. Absolutely. High level stuff. Yeah, um, what, what, le what size of parcel are you looking at for 10 megawatt versus a 250 versus something higher? Uh, somebody like me, I try and look for larger parcels, setbacks, visibility. Close, uh, 10 proximity. acres, 10 at 20 acres? It would really, not even realistically. Uh, project size-wise, um, our five megawatt projects that I've been permitting throughout the state this year are roughly, our smallest configuration is 75 by 150. Right. Um, so it, it's about 11,000 square foot for the five megawatt, 13, 14 for a 10, um, maybe up to 15. But your bigger sites, you're talking acres, right? I mean, your your 100 megawatt site's going to end up being around probably about an acre worth of fence, okay. roughly. Probably actually an acre and a half. And it's important to get that. <laughs> yeah. no, so it's a, definitely it. important to understand the scale right. and the footprint for sure. Um, I do have visuals I could show you. We could also do that at the next time or what have you. Oh. Uh, and they are also included in that. One drive. It's a fraction. Try, of try to, to try to talk me out of this thing being buried. Can't. You can't bury it. Being I buried. Know. Well, uh, toxic. You you know it'll keep the toxic inside the cube. Oh, if, so like upon decommissioning of a project? No, he's saying oh, actually yeah. operational to install oh. it to bury it. Oh, bury it. Uh, you need airflow. You need everything needs to. I mean, you'd have to have a the cooling serious. systems now aren't set up for. Geothermal is what you're thinking, uh, Dickie. He's well, like, uh, put them in the ocean. That's about it. Then <laughs> what? Uh, what about the toxicity? How does? It, what if it gets out of and into the watershed? Because I'm thinking, you know, desperately, some of these areas are close to some. It's part of the watershed. design standards because I've seen them where, if if they've got watersheds around them or any type of water. Uh, close to a well, you can ask for a concrete, a concrete under them and a concrete barrier around it. Sort of think of it as a pool support. 
you know, yeah, basically like, like, like a fuel tank. tank. Yeah, it's like, like a, it's like, like the same. You can ask that for. I mean, there's a lot of things to do for this. There's there's many different designs you can put in. There definitely are, and each situation's unique. Um, given topography, given groundwater separation, all those things come into play. And you're gonna find that as applications come forward that you might think a little bit more seriously about an NMC battery and, that, and the potential runoff from that versus an LFP battery. Um, and those are things that there's con there are consultants out there that will help boards like you um, in order to vet a project. Um, I had done a project, there two projects over in Lancaster recently, and there's a company called Tuvesud they have since opened, a, I believe their office is in Waltham or Walpole, one or the other. Um, they just opened up an office here in the Mass um, with this industry and the offshore wind industry becoming pretty big. Um, so they're here and they're a resource. There are many other in, um, companies in Worcester as well, like Tyant Bond, uh, Graves Engineering, they're well versed in this stuff as well. Um, so there are people out there that know the content that's in here, right? So you don't have to feel like you guys need to know everything and be able to vet that yourself. There are people to help through the process, for yeah, sure. Bond's really good. We use them at my company mm -hmm. for any type of environmental issues that potentially come up at our gate and rake stations. Because yeah. I am going to contact DCR about this, too, for our town. Yeah. If the town wants to go forward with this, one of the things you might want to explicitly in here is as part of the application uh, process the applicant will pay for unfit 3G a peer review for a consultant and just make that very clear. That's, That's the fee structure we got to come up with. It's almost like a subdivision with and, a fee yeah, structure. Mom may make very clear that that's not even negotiable. That's going to be part of this application process. Yeah, I would imagine it's not in your special permit stuff already. Like all, all costs borne by the applicant kind yeah, of language. Just but we haven't had anything to this extent. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Yeah. I mean, Kevin doesn't really hit us with a lot of fees for stuff like that. I mean, this is this is almost like a utility industrial project. That, yeah. Uh, so you'd have to take a lot. Yeah, more. you'd want that definitely spelled out for yeah. sure. And, and the, because that's that's normal practice. I mean, and it may be that you make it clear the anything over to fifty would be require that. I'm not sure you'd want to require that. For everybody wants to do one in their home, but so typically the 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 home process, the residential process, is just building inspector and fire. Yeah. Um, so they wouldn't necessarily be in front of you. You wouldn't be looking at those applications. That's more um, the fire and um, building two, two, departments. Two, two, three would be. Like yeah, to be two and three. You would absolutely want a peer review, like your typical still stormwater peer review, site plan peer review, and then aside from that probably a peer review from somebody like two sued to actually vet the system because they're going to look through the, the pieces that are on the next following pages that go through your safety standards um, and how those standards relate to the system itself. So um, hmm. not to skip too far forward, but I mean, I think it's probably the most important part of it um, being that your system itself um, has to be certified through a nine, what they call a nine five forty certification. So that's a UL, uh, that's a UL standard. Um, that is done at the completion of a site. So prior to that, upon a submission to you, an applicant would be providing you with the UL nine five forty A test result. So that nine five forty A is their large scale fire testing for your lithium ion batteries. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they set they heat up a, a single cell in a module. A module is roughly, uh, what I don't know, three feet by a foot and a half. Um, that holds, and with our system, it holds 64 cells. Um, so they set fire to one of those, and they set fire to it by heating it up. So they introduce that element of heat, it propagates, um, and that testing tells them how that, re how that cell reacted how that module reacted, and then eventually a system size um, testing as well. So UL9540 tests it on the cellular level, the module level, as well as the system level being the whole container. The UL9540 certification certifies the whole system when it's completed. Um, typically done by, again, somebody like Tuvesuit as well, they do that stuff. Um, I believe their sister company, Tuve Rainland, overseas 
um, had done all the testing for uh, SunGrow system, which we utilize as a company. Um, so there are companies that are familiar with all of this stuff out there. Um, and then if you look at your solar bylaw, you would see that I believe yours has the standards for like the inverters and stuff like 1741. Mm -hmm. Uh, there is a new 1741 SB out, which all systems will have to comply with, but that's here nor there. Um, that's just stuff that we have to abide by in order to get the product here for one um, and to get an electrical permit sign off, really. Um, so all of our stuff has to meet these UL standards um, and NFPA codes, realistically, at the end of the day. Um, but kind of jumped around there, but I think that's important to kind of point out is that there are standards and codes out there that regulate this on the state level. Um, so this is a requirement for the system to actually meet NFPA 855 code. So in order, we can't take a, a battery system that hasn't been through testing and put it out in the field and actually meet NFPA 855, the fire chief would tell me, and the electrical code would, the electrical inspector would probably point that out to him or however that may go. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of safety features built into these systems. Um, these systems have battery management systems that track cha changes in cell temperature, uh, state of charge, um, voltage, things of that nature. There's thousands of data data points that it collects in the milliseconds. Um, there are different levels of um, that management system. The top level being um, combining all of the data in the lower levels and actually putting that into an artificial intelligence to actually predict faults and understand how the system's operating and understand how that system's actually decomposing over time to better understand the life of the battery and to be able to predict faults and, and prevent events. That's your number one fire stop is your battery management system. Um, that's going to tell you all your data. It's going to be able to tell you that this cell's trending hot, it can shut that rack down, or module down, racks, there shuts down in racks, um, and it can shut that down, bypass that, not even run it, and call us for service until we look at it. Um, there's a lot of safety features. Not all systems are the same. Again, I'm just going from what I know from my systems that we use. Um, but gonna be they're, they're pretty similar. Tesla is a pretty similar product. Um, than as, as the one that we utilize, which is a SunGrow manufacturing, but there's more and more coming to market. Um, and there's more and more going through stringent testing and um, the large-scale the large scale fire testing. Do you guys, um, obviously you've got wireless or some, um, basically uh, SCADA-type systems that monitor this. Is there a central office that this goes to or... Yes, sir. I mean, do you guys have an operations group that handles all of your projects that are in? Yep, the operations okay. center is out of New York. Okay. Yep. So they, they would be the number that's on the fence. Okay. So they'd be your... If there was any issue, that operations center would call the chief and... Uh, Correct. Okay, that's all. I'm yeah, so they would see the faults. They would have their kind of tier of what's right. going to happen. And then they'd call us and the fire department if there's two alarms. Um, if it's just a single alarm, I... And just because yes. I'm used to dealing with it, is it only wireless or do you have a hard line that goes with that? We typically do wireless where we can. Um, okay. We have done projects for solar and stuff where we had to do a hard line um, for connectability issues, right? Okay. So if it's bad service area, we would want that anyway, um, reliability-wise. I just know my company requires hard and wireless lines. Yeah. For operations. Yep. So typically, yeah, I think there's right. some places that are good and some places mm -hmm. aren't. We just do it because anything that can be controllable. With this, they're monitoring. It's a whole different story. It's on the control side. We have to have a hard line. That's just our rules. But and I think it's a good one. I don't. I don't argue with I it. Agree. Mm -hmm. But since you're just doing monitoring, I wireless in my mind is fine. But no, nope. I like it. I just think we got to get this to the bylaw subcommittee and get them working. You know. And I gather from the fire chief, from you said that residents are already doing this now. <laughs> yes. So it'd be kind of good to have something in the bylaw that actually yeah. regulates it. Mm -hmm. So I would ask, has our electrical inspector inspected any of those yet? All the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Lester's uh, been properly trained and is fully vetting them. I know he went through the whole training for the solar side, so. Yep. 
Okay, um, good. And everything's working out really well. I've had no issues at all. The health systems have been out for years, a couple of years now that they've been pushing them hard. Oh yeah. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, these the battery systems in general are really becoming more prominent as your solar's winding down as an incentive in state, and it's just a natural progression of the energy industry and shifting focus to offshore wind, even onshore wind. Um, the batteries play a major role in the economics of those. Um, yeah. We just get out of that. We don't do wind anymore. Yeah. We gave it back to the Swedes or the uh, Netherlands, the Dutch. Yeah. We walked away. Hmm. So I, I think this bylaw goes through quite a bit of detail as far as requirements, safety standards. Um, there's a lot in here. This is a pretty lengthy bylaw, um, but I think it I think it really does cover a good amount of information aside from whatever is in your existing um, bylaws for your special permit, site plan, and what have you. Um, My suggestion to the board is I'm all for it. I just think we got to get in front of the bylaw subcommittee and get our, yeah. our new planner involved deeply in this. I think it'd take a couple days to get this in shape to then start evaluating it. Yeah, because typically the, the, what we've told the public is that when a new bylaw comes in, like you're doing here, bring it to the planning board. We refer it to the bylaw subcommittee. They vet it, put it together, shape it bring it back to the planning board, and if need be, we run a public hearing and then uh, get it on the docket for the town. Yeah. I truly believe we could pull this off by next May. The fall town meeting, nah, I don't think that's going to happen. But well, I, it's, our, it's too late. 13th, yeah. yeah it's, it's I don't not, know, like yeah, a couple of weeks. Let's, for sure. And I, but I think it's again, doable by yeah, the, the I'm May here town to meeting. Start this conversation again. Yeah. So this is good. <laughs> And we don't have anything on the docket right now other than working on an industrial bylaw is what we're working on. Mm -hmm. yep. But uh, without a planner, like you said, we've sort of been hogtied. You believe me, you guys aren't Not the only Richard's ones. Not the Richard's a great planner. Everybody around wrong. Central but Mass I can't, I, have this issue right now. If we paid him 40 hours a week, we'd be broke inside of uh, three months. <laughs> Not that I've already started looking at a few things and yeah. just, just, you know. Yeah. Well, I've looked at, I mean, obviously there's other towns. And the other thing I just I want to put to the board Tell me if I'm wrong. We can't say no to this. That's uh, correct. That's Governor Healy's already said uh, as of July that that's not an option. Yeah, there are a lot of, uh, and I say a lot, There, there's four that really speak to energy storage, even even as a standalone system, um, that really, they don't allow, they're not allowing the towns to prohibit it. Yeah, um, they you did. have to allow it in some capacity. Yeah. Um, you can't, like, you can't, you can't just it. allow it in like 2% of your town. Yeah. It's the yeah. state policy part of things that this attorney general's office is, is standing ground on, it seems like. That's what um, I heard from Wokeham. Yeah, yeah, they came out in yeah, July. Yeah, there was the decision out of there. Um, New they, Braintree, New Braintree too, they yeah. were trying to deny. Yep. New Braintree, Ocam, um, Spencer's, Spencer had some language in there as well. Yeah. That got denied. Um, well, attorney general shot him down with the bylaws. Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot going on. for Operating facilities or dump sites for batteries? Because so it was battery operation. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they were trying to save. Okay. And the state came out and shot down their bylaws mm -hmm. and said, you have to allow it in some form in your towns. Yep. I think it was July. Is that when that? I believe came out? so. Uh, yeah, there was one in July. There was a couple in May. There was a couple in June. So um, pretty consistently, same language, reiterating things out of that office. And I may have put those in the OneDrive to Tamika. I, I think I did put a couple of the MLU decisions. Um, and if I not, I'll add idea. them. I really believe, I mean. That way you can kind of see what's been going on. Grid's um, going to do it sooner or later, and so is Eversource, I guarantee Yeah, and I've, and I've worked with a few towns already on this exact subject, um, going in, just having these conversations, trying to get things right and protect the towns. Um, I've, per I've permitted these projects in... Oh, Brookfield, Charlton, Leicester, Lemonster, Lancaster, Oxford. I mean, when we Saltbridge, Uxbridge. This is my opinion. Again, I'm getting ahead of it since I got to deal with the bylaw subcommittee. Is that when we get something, this guy over here is one I want to take a look at what we've got down from the safety wise to make sure, you know, we're, oh, we've got time. everything correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. have Seth yeah. take a look at it and make sure because that's the biggest thing. Chief for me. Monica, all I need to do is him keep him out of the fence. <laughs> I need to worry about if something goes wrong. Yeah. Uh, what we need to do, does the town have the finances to keep 
you know, uh, and I'm getting, I'm getting crazy, a, a, a foam truck around or the amount of foam we need to put out a 10 megawatt facility, things like that. I wanted to make sure yeah, that those uh, are big units. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I went online to look at one meg and you it's know, pretty big. You have houses around here that use one meg a month, so. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, really? Our yeah. containers are, the containers that we're utilizing, just to give you a perspective, yeah. no, look, they're, yeah. they're six feet uh, six feet wide, eight and a half feet tall, 30 feet long. Um, the way that our system gets set up is that two containers go back to back. Um, and the doors that you Good open, they, no, no, non, no habitable containers, period. Right. Um, the industry has moved away from that since about 2019. So there's no DAC rooms or anything in them? It's just electronics? That just a single box. Uh, it opens from one side. Um, there's three different um, compartments. Or technically, yeah, um, and they just all the doors open from one side. Our system comes pre-assembled from the manufacturer. There's no handling of batteries on site like the old systems. Um, so there's a, there's a lot that go that is involved with them. Um, and like I said, each system's different. If you look at a Tesla um, power pack, that's essentially the type of type of container that we're utilizing. And for five megawatt storage, how many containers would you? Five megawatt storage, eight containers. Okay. So four pads, eight containers. It's typically how we run and each our container site. six by thirty. Six by thirty. Yep. Okay. Each pad's that thirteen. That gives by a really good idea of visualizing the size. Yeah, definitely. Oh. Is it provable <laughs> that this stuff with AI monitoring is fireproof? Like. <laughs> Are you telling me they can literally get in there before fire starts with just electronics and shutting power? Obviously, the system fires don't need electricity to start, but because the fuel is the battery, the, the lithium. Yeah. But that's, I guess, probably the biggest concern with people would be: can you, can this be a hundred percent or or safe, or is this just a waiting, waiting game? I think when we think about yeah, electrical, use the word things, mitigate risk. Mitigate yeah, risk. mitigation measures, right? Yeah. And and we do that a lot with like mitigation plans. So yeah. if this, then that. Yeah. Um, and typically that's done through like an, an ERP process and yeah. and understanding what that protocol is. Uh, we work with a consultant out of Ohio called uh, Energy Safety Response Group. They're huge in this industry. They're the the ones that are on the ground um, going to fire events that have happened. Um, there's been a few in New York, small events out in New York and Warwick, New York most recently um, that they're involved with. They're doing the investigation um, and all that on that on that end of it. They also do what I was talking about before with the 9548 testing. They also perform testing at their facility. So they've set fires to these systems on purpose every yeah. day. Um, so they know what's coming out of them with certain applications of water, lack thereof, and an abundance of water. They know what that looks like, and, and that drives their response. For our system, it's to let it burn. And let, unless there's a life safety situation involved, it's to let that system burn the energy out. For our system, that's because we've been able to prove that that module that's on fire does not propagate up, down, left, or right. So you're talking about burning the energy out of one module. This particular SunGrow system that we use has never caught on fire. They've never had a fire incident in the history of the company producing um, energy storage, I which say, is pretty incredible. I don't think anybody can say anything is ever 100% safe. Agreed, it's electrical. I, I think it's a matter of is it high risk or very low risk, and can it be contained so that there's no public health and safety risk associated with it because it is contained. So I think containment and suppression are the, the key things. Can it be contained or suppressed so there's not a uh, injury off the property? Yep. It's, it's basically a safety mitigation program is what they'll come up with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times you'll see on like TV with car fires on the side of the highway. You've got these fire departments dumping 20,000 gallons of water on it. One, they've got an issue, right? They've got a burning car on the side of the road that they've got other pedestrians going down the street with. Um, and two, with this, these types of systems, you add water to it, you can cool it down. You can stop that thermal runaway, essentially, but it can come back. 
Um, so guidance on the ESRG side, the energy safety response group side, has been that if you allow that energy to burn out, you don't have that risk of propagation happening again. Um, and that's been a big driver in their guidance and a big driver of what they're looking at and how they can address using water, not using water, maybe just a little bit water. Um, let that system burn out, protect surrounding exposures, and go from there is how, what our response is. Not to it's say that it's the a next containment guy. approach. So yeah, that and it helps conserve your resources. Um, you're not just throwing water on this thing to, to, for it to light up again, right? Um, so there's different situations that you could come across, and, and there's different systems that require different things. Some re some systems require gas suppression, um, meaning that it would have the ability to release that gas to take that oxygen out. Um, typically, you'd see that in like an NMC battery setup um, or a bigger container that's not purpose built. Uh, that has more airspace or is air cooled, um, typically harder to get at. Um, if, so the gas fills that big volume um, to create your, to have stop you had, your lower limits. Have you had anything in mass? Because I, I know you you got other chiefs. Has there been any issues with the existing stuff since 2016? No. Nothing? That's what I was going to ask. No. That, that's worried. a huge plus Tesla, for Zan and Keith to get to you to. Electric uh, pedal bikes. Yeah, those are the ones we're having problems with right What's now. What's the ele electric pedal bikes? The e -bikes. Oh Jesus! Yeah, that's like the uh, the the skateboards that would heat yeah. up from China and yeah. Same Overboard, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, no, I just, I just was curious because I hadn't mm. I hadn't heard of one. Um, I I know before I left my old company, a uh, power plant was putting them in as a uh, as a storage in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. So. They were looking for ways to offset the uh, transmission lines. Yep. yep. It was cheaper to put in the battery system than put in a uh, gas turbine. And that's how that's what this kind of policy goes to is like a non-wires approach to infrastructure upgrades. So instead of rebuilding all of your 13.8 lines into 23 kV for your three phase going down your road and being able to carry that power further, um, you got battery storage along the way or on that on that. Um, on that one distribution line um, in order to help that voltage drop and all that stuff. So there's different applications as far as transmission, distribution, home. They all work the same, just well, apply Instead of building another substation, let's say on Route 68. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe just the batteries would be enough to... That would be nice. <laughs> I think a substation <laughs> would have been nice. It should have happened. Yes, yes it, it should have. I agree. hundred percent. Because so I don't know how... Too far between. How the two substations we have now, it was asked of the select board, but I don't know how far it went. You know, do they know where the electricity comes from, number one, and how is the substations for feeding this town? Well, that was pretty well, obvious. What's, when, what's the capacity? When they hit the uh, solar guys up with... Uh, God awful amounts of money to yes. rebuild their subs. That means the subs are pretty much getting to their max capacity. So yeah. that's especially now. Grid's going to have to take that into Saint consideration. Saint Joseph's Abbey. Those that's a lot. Of acreage Twenty-eight over there. megawatts worth of that, or eight and a half megawatts up there. I forget. No, twenty-eight megawatts 28. up there. I believe. Yeah, they got like seven, eight, seven, eight fields up there. Yeah. Full of storage units. No, no I don't, battery. I don't, I don't, know. No, I don't batteries. think there's any. Spencer is not a friend of batteries. Oh, okay. as of late. So you're just saying. But it does feed into substation. our substation. Okay, substation yeah, stuff. right. That, so. That's a direct line. That's yes. a separate feeder. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I think the answer is to get this to the bylaw subcommittee. And I, I'm going to be honest. I don't think they should start working on it until we get a planner because even with the subcommittee, Without some, without staff being available, unless this guy wants to jump in, but really, uh, I, I think we need to do that. We need to have a full time planner uh, knocking that, helping knock this thing out. That you. was the one thing David was good about. He could do the research, yeah. bring it to the committee, say, "Hey, this is what I found." Yeah, they could then they could act on it instead of trying to do things themselves. So I really right. thought that was a good procedure that we did. And I'd make one suggestion. I see this in the other bylaws. You did amendment to zoning bylaw, you don't need a severability clause. Severability clause. You don't need it once in the zoning bylaw, you don't need it. In the, in the, in the individual one? Yeah. You just oh, need, oh, yeah, the end here? Yep. Yeah. You just right. need yeah. once in your zoning bylaw that anything in the bylaw is severed. 
There's a tendency of some to put in every amendment, and that's not necessary. Interesting. But, um, yeah. I'm always available as a consultant to help, help Dave if he needs or help John. If John, yeah. yeah. You could talk to Dave. You might need help in holding. He's buried pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> you might ask him if he needs a little consultant help. <laughs> um, it's, yeah, it's still like 10. Four, five, eight pages left, or whatever. Yeah, there's a but bunch of information. We, here. I think it really needs to go. That I mean, we could talk about it here to a blue in the face, but until yeah. the bylaw subcommittee gets a hold of it, which of course that's all the planning board. Yeah. Anybody else? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> planning board, and we had one of us. Yeah. I'll yeah, I gotta dig his name out from yeah. Maryland's because he was a huge help. I would suggest what I need tonight is just some concurrence from the board that. You want the bylaw review committee to take a look at it? I agree. I don't think that. we need a motion. I just think we just need a... We also are going to need a room. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's like, oh, don't get me started. Don't let him give you flack. Mm -hmm. Is this document go on the town website? I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't you until it's in a better form. That's my opinion because yeah. you can create hysteria now? too quick. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't doesn't hurt to to talk about it. But I, I, I mean, just like I'm going to throw an example out. I, I was joking about uh, on Hillside of putting in a sewer treatment plant. I went went around this town in less than two days, and <laughs> yeah. we were getting a sewer treatment plan on Hillside. And I'm like, I was just joking. I was kidding. It's a perfect spot. Yeah, <laughs> don't listen to me. That's great. So I think we need to get I this. I know where the digester's no, no, going no, now. No, no. <laughs> Methane digester. Yes. Vanguard Renewals would love to hear you say that. <laughs> um, get it before the committee. I, I like that form, and then just use that as a basis, and then maybe have I think when John scary. starts, have him get uh, pull some other ones from other towns that are active. Yeah. And cut and paste and start. I mean, I'm not. I'm one. I don't reinvent wheels. That's, right. That's no right. needed to be doing that and start. Totally putting one together. Definitely. Actually, I would suggest that. You no, know, I'm making a list of things that may be top priority for for John, and I suggest that may be appropriate. The way you could do is simply amend this as a component of your solar energy. Yeah, and that's what I proposed really? last year. Yeah, but you'll notice that like. That language is way less than this. Yeah. You could do a combination of all. Yeah. And Oxford has a bylaw. It could be in the yeah. sub yeah. subcategory yeah. under so yeah. 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 yeah, I just when I heard the word standalone, I was yeah. I was fearful about having that tied into a solar unless you made it a separate again, yeah. this is all the bylaw right. sub can you knock out and see what they want to no. do, but I think it's a great idea. I it was when you were here. Yeah. Just we were inundated. We we Definitely. told the town in a town meeting that we yeah, had that three would. bylaws that were gonna get done. Yeah. Unfortunately we got to two of them and the okay. third one is is still under work. So yeah. I, no, awesome. I, I like it. I appreciate you guys' time and hearing me out and being able to connect again. So Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, here is a resource to you if you ever need anything and uh look forward to some more communication. Yeah, cards. Yes, I do. Okay. I like that for you. Because I was expecting your partner in crime to be here, so you left him up. <laughs> Brandon? <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> I, I, I owe him a, co a call, and I've not done it, because he wanted to find out about Eversource. And oh, I could yeah. hook him up with Nikki Bruno, who is our uh, our clean energy vice president. president. Yeah. We need to talk to him. He might have already done that. but uh, He could have. Yeah, we've got a project submitted that he had a question Nikki. on. Yeah, it's under her group. Yeah. Where's the value yeah. of the property? <laughs> <Hi, gentlemen. laughs> yeah. I appreciate your time. I'm going to get you some Thank cards. You very much. Seth has anything. I was going to say, know, does the, the Chief's yeah, going to uh, come out with a budget line item for foam? <laughs> um, so I'll deal with that in the... Uh, I'm kidding. Yeah. Just don't listen to me. Um, we did, so back last April, uh, we did meet with them, uh, with our former town administrator. Um, Thank you, sir. Captain yes. of the fire department, works for Eversource. He's the director of emergency planning at Eversource, so he's fully aware of all this. So he, he was brought into the meeting. Um, George was at the meeting, and our health inspector was at the meeting. And we talked about all this. We actually did a site visit in Berlin. Uh, to look at this um, and some of the pros and cons and some of the troubles that they went through and how they resolved some of that. And I, I feel that we need to get ahead of this and come up with our own language before the state comes in and says, this is by right, you have no choice. Yeah. So. The state is going to be making some stance on this. The 
Governor Healy has said that in a recent uh, public announcement. Yeah, she wants people to live in my house, too, and that's not going to happen either, yeah. so good luck with that. So it is coming from the state level, so yeah. it is definitely important for towns to protect themselves and the, how they see fit first. Yeah. Well, yeah. The other aspect is, as the fire chief has noted, people already doing in the houses, need to have something. The houses are more dangerous to us yeah. Oh yeah. than this is. Yeah, you've more. got one place as opposed to small little ones yeah. all yep. over through town. Yeah. Yeah, so need some of them, I'm right sure, way. don't ask Lester to come and visit them either. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't happen in this town. Yeah. <laughs> it's attached to a flammable structure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, that's where the insurance company goes. Hello, hablo English. No. Yeah. Okay. Tom, um, thanks. Thank excellent, you, gentlemen. Excellent Thank presentation. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> so I guess I'll ask the board, do we... I mean, I've got to reconstitute this uh, bylaw subcommittee, but yeah, I, I'm like Norman. I talk about. I'm hesitant to do it without a planner, because all of us are volunteers. Uh, I, I guess all, all I'll say is you might want to, if we can find out if, if anybody remembers the name of that new guy. Oh, we John. There? No, no. We, um, oh, let me see if I can. Gibbons. Tim Gibbons? Yeah, I knew it was Tim. I just couldn't remember his last name. It's not Tom. I was thinking it was Tom. Okay. So. Let me go to my... Uh, just just a, a heads up. To see if he wants to still be on the party. Uh, and uh, The new town planner will be starting October 23rd. So yeah. we'll be at our October 24th meeting. Yeah. So Excellent. That's, that's not that far away. No. Uh, just a heads up to him. 27 days. Bonnie... Bonnie Bessie is still out of town, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a tough one. I like, she was always good on that, but she's out of town. And well, we could ask this um, still select we? board, and also on this, uh, since we're video, to uh, anybody that would like to join the bylaw subcommittee, please feel free to submit a letter of, uh, of interest. Mm -hmm. yeah, we please, have openings. Please do. Please, yeah. yeah. I can post something on social media. Oh, to me, yeah. that'd be great. Some interest yeah, and put Thanks. something on the website. Okay. All is all more is better. <coughs> yeah. Excellent. Okay. That's a great presentation. Excuse me. Extending special permits. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, I'll be right back. Denied. So, <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. messing with you. Believe me, it's been Tell your daddy still builds a good house. These that's all I are can a pain say. In the butt. So I got uh, three special permits. Both are about to be two years old. Uh, Devon Pond Row. That's three and four, and 192 Glenwood Road. So I don't know how many of these of these have actually been extended in town before, but I believe. I, get I like to say that I think, unless Norm tells me wrong, you will be the first. I think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm hoping we can do it just with a vote prior There's to somebody the else? There is, and I discovered it by accident last week, and I talked to Richard about it. Um, there was one, oh, now I can't remember the street. You guys did extend it um, for another couple of years. I think it was Campbell Street because they hadn't been able to build because of COVID. Oh. And, um, oh, was that George Lucy here? Or no, it wasn't him. It okay. was somebody different. But you guys did extend one because I was I looking remember. to make sure we didn't need a public hearing. If we, if we didn't, hmm. so. But I yeah, I had tried to extend mine, but they were already lapsed last time. So yep. I went through the public hearing process again on these mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. So these are about to be two years old. So I was hoping for a vote either at this meeting or the next meeting to extend. I believe I just need a. You probably know better than me, but I believe I just need a vote before the two-year period. You do, but you, you need to state what the cause is. Uh, special permits can be extended only for good cause. What constitutes good cause is anybody's guess. The state law doesn't specify that. Neither does own by law. So write something up. Um, what, 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 yeah, so I would just say, you know, construction. Why do you, why do you need the extra two years? Yeah. I would just say uh, construction delays, and we're, st we're still planning to That's good cause. move forward with those uses. Most commonly, it's been unforeseen difficulties in obtaining uh, other permits or uh, the financing associated with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's adequate. Just need it written up and sent to us. And just sent, sent to make a yep. email. Email's good enough, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I wrote a, I did write a request letter, and I can just uh, either amend that or supplement that. Mm -hmm. Just so that'd be great. Yep, I saw that in here. So the board can make a motion to approve it, such as receipt of a letter uh, identifying the good calls. And nothing's changing, obviously. It's the same plan. Yep, same plan. And yep. whatever. Yeah, yeah, so it's plan 911 17 lots three and four, which I have a copy of if you need it. Those are the estate lots, correct? Those are the two estate lots on, yep. the, on the plan that created four lots. And uh, lot six on plan 895 77. An extension of a special permit only changes the expiration date doesn't change anything else on this board expressly yep. changes it. And if you do that, you need to go back to the amendment process. Yep. Hearings and stuff. Yep. I'm, do we need a motion to, a, I'll make a motion to extend, I'll do one at a time, because I want to look at the other one, the uh, uh, special permit for lots three and four on Demon Pond Row. Um, for the uh, cause of uh, construction delays and uh, issues unforeseen. associated unforeseen construction delays for another two years, I'll specify the time. Mm -hmm. When does it expire? Mm -hmm. I believe Mark, is it October? 18? I have it right here. Hang on a second. 18th on the 21st. October 18th is what I've got here. Yeah, that sounds right. Extend to October 18th, 2025. 2020, yeah, 2025, correct. Yep. Yep. You need to say contingent upon receipt of the letter. Contingent upon receipt of Yeah, upon the cause for, for the updated letter with the uh, cause State of call. listed inside the letter. Do I have a second. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> um, so therefore, I can't um, be more than happy. I, I have no problem real with quick it. Before the second, just to ask a yeah, second, 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 and then just, then, so. so second, and then um, do you have a an idea of the building timeline after you within no, two years? I guess. Yeah, we hope to do it in the next permit period. Okay. Yeah, with the building on both of them, or yeah, the, it's basically on demand, so it depends on yeah what we get for customers and what they like for lots, Mark. But aren't you because this is 2021, aren't you grandfathered in from the uh growth management bylaw because this was approved before then? Oh, the no, I'm sorry, the special permit was not the building. I, I take that back, yep, I take it back. Yeah, I think I'm still subject to growth management, right? Yeah, well, is this an A&R or is this a... It, it was an A&R at the same... Well, the A&R... Yeah, it wasn't. Think about that, because if it's an A&R, you're not... There's no growth management associated with A&R. Right. Oh, okay. So I, I don't think you need to worry about it. You could apply for a permit any day, all day. I'm not mistaken. Check with the building. I'm not the expert. Yeah, I'm, I'm just... Say, uh, yeah. Check with the building inspector, but... I have to check on that, because the A&R was... Some time ago, I think it was 13, maybe. Mm -hmm. Good, the A and R's are once they're approved, if I'm not mistaken, they're good forever. Mm -hmm. The bylaw sunsets in May, anyways. I'm sorry. The bylaw will sunset in May, anyways. Six okay. months from now. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Anything further? No. I'm All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we need to fill out any forms? For the extension of this special permit, sign anything or anything like that? I would need a decision to record. Because yeah. you're going to have to record this, right, with yeah, the Registry yeah. of Deeds? I basically just need a decision. decision extending that's, it. Yeah, okay, good. That's all I want to make sure of is you got everything when you go to. Since it's going to be say that all other conditions set forth in the special permit remain the same. The okay, same. good. As long as the vote is before the expiration. Does That's the, the key. Does yeah. the decision have to be signed before the expiration? No. no. You, the vote extends it, mm -hmm. okay. but you want to have it signed and yeah, be good anyway. to have it signed. Yeah. Yeah. We could do that at the October 10th meeting and still be ahead of. You yeah. can't meet October yeah. 10th. 
we can we can meet. We can't meet, hold a public hearing. Have, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, so we would. How are we going to meet moment. here? Because this is an election area. This this room is not. Oh, I thought you could meet on any property that where there was election going on. I might be wrong. Yeah, and Jill doesn't specify that. Okay. Hmm. I'm good. You do I, need another motion though, because you only did that one for Dem and Pond. Yeah, I wanted to look. I hadn't had a chance to uh, make sorry. sure that everything was covered on this one. Oh, Just wanted sorry. to make sure there wasn't anything that I was missing in the uh, findings. I looked it over and I didn't see anything, but I just wanted to do another quick see. Yes, yep, special common driveway. Let's just this. put it this way. When I saw that map, it goes. There was a map about um, the lot over on Demon Pond. Yeah. In yeah, I, I'm pretty sure in here. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen it. I can remember walking it over there one day for kind of for Concom, I believe. It was that far back. Yeah. The only thing, Mark, I, that I had a question on when I looked through this for 192 Glenwood, in this special permit, it talked about a common driveway, but I, I see this as just uh, coming off Glenwood Road directly into the property. So I was confused about the common driveway. It that lot was granted a special permit for a common drive. Yeah. And I didn't. I don't think I need to renew it because the common drive has been constructed mm -hmm. to the lot. Okay. So I felt confident I didn't need to renew that special permit. Well, if I remember special permits, as long as you started work on it, and it's considered. Yeah. I would, executed. I would kind of defer to the board or your opinion because it's. The driveway is constructed, but nothing else on the lot is, so I assumed I wouldn't. I'll have to look at your bylaw. Uh, typically, the state law requires you you initiate it. Some bylaws have, require substantial completion within a specified period of time. I think we just went through this with Clee, yeah. and uh, it was initiating, basically, is yeah, what we were looking at. We don't have substantial. So I, I think, Mark, you're good on that one. So I just want, yeah. that was the only thing, because when I looked through the conditions, I saw, uh-oh, there's a special permit for common driveway. So uh, that was exclusive to this. So that's why I thought I better ask. Okay, good enough. Yeah, I don't have anything else. I'm trying to figure it out myself. You know, I don't, I don't know if it's easier if these are going to expire again to drill a well and maybe initiate do enough to initiate construction so I don't have to keep renewing these things. If it, Bring a double it, white on there and drop yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm fine. I don't have any more questions. Oh, I'll make a motion to um, extend a special permit on 192 Glenwood Road um, with all conditions in place. The only changing aspect is the date going to October 18th, 2025. Again, contingent upon the letter being sent to the planning board for a good cause. And that is lot six. Just um, oh, it didn't say it here in your letter. I think it was original, hmm. originally. Okay. Well, I apologize. I, I was reading off your letter and it didn't say it, but you are correct. It says lot six on the plan. Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure it was. Let me amend that to lot yeah. six. Uh, no. Also known as 192. Yep. It just you're gonna have to change that in the letter because it says the lot is known as. It doesn't say which lot. Okay. In the letter, so drop in a number six and we should be good. So moved. Thank Second. You. Any discussion? Um, why the heck haven't you sold this? No, I'm kidding. Don't. <laughs> we know where it is, right? Yeah, I do. I was gonna, I was gonna move up there myself. It just didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, common driveways? Do they mark like what, how the mailing address? You got to put like lot one, lot two, lot common three. Common driveways actually have signage that's required for them as part of the special permits. Yes. Okay. So yeah. if, if each there's house number still has its own. House number. Yeah. It is an A or B or that kind of thing. Yeah. If I remember the bylaw right, you've got to put the sign out front, six, certain amount of. Six inch black lettering yeah. at yep. the end of the driveway. Yeah. So whatever sign sale will be modified for this when it gets sold to 192. If it's not there already, I don't remember. Uh, I don't think there's a sign there now. There was at one point in time. So, like when the ambulance goes up there, they know mm. yeah. different 
Like Sign's got to be out front. It can't be set back at the house because the house property is set, in this case, 366 feet or 600, 366 feet back from the road. So yeah. there's no way an uh, ambulance could see that sign. Well, they could, but maybe. Okay. So that's why this. That's why the common had them out front. Yep. All right. Further? Nope. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you. Okay. <coughs> you will be recorded as the second extension of the <laughs> special permits in Rutland. It's not on record yet. We'll see. <laughs> thank, thank you. All right. Good evening. Okay. Master plan. Uh, I think we've already kind of decided we're going to wait until, I shouldn't say July. Yeah. Please do have a meeting tomorrow night. Canceled. Well, I, I suggested in the middle of the years that you not meet tomorrow night on it, that you wait till the new, new plan is here because the new planner should be involved with it. And I would strongly urge that the board focus on the vision statement and the recommendations made and the invitation. See how big that is? No. But uh, that's the reason I'm. That's the fluff, baby. <laughs> that's, it's the last 20 the, pages. The board, <laughs> the the board should, pages. in my opinion, yep. focus on the vision, yeah. the recommendations made in each section, and the implementation plan at the end. Uh, if the you mean board members, storms? if board members have issues with or comments on other aspects of it, I suggest they meet one on one with the planner yeah. and let John make a list of all those changes and then get with CMR, CMR, RP, C, Central Mass Regional Planning yeah. to go over those technical aspects. Because the board shouldn't spend its meeting time, I don't know, that, that type of. Believe me, I dealt with a board, I had a board that went through step by step. How many yes. months? How many months or years? Ten or twelve meetings, special meetings over yeah. an eight-month period, I think it was. And we're not talking about two-hour meetings. We're talking about three to four-hour meetings oh my God. because it just got into mundane. Minutia. Yes. Yeah. And it's stuff that, yes, you can meet with me and we could have gone over it very quickly and save everybody else a headache. Mm -hmm. um, it. I, I Semicolon versus colon, period instead of a comma, uh, it instead of her, him, or it, it just, it really was, and that's, um, that, that tends to, to drag up and debate about is it 300,000 or 350,000, and it just, so that type of stuff, the board shouldn't. I, I, I'll put disagree it for the, because I am so sick of it. Yeah. Well, to, to I'm Dick's sick point, and tired of Boston telling us what the hell to do. Well, it's going to get worse with uh, the current administration. That's my opinion. Oh, it's going to get worse is right. So well, I just have a, a comment so to the board I wanted to make about the master plan, which I'm really frustrated and ticked off about. Again, a percentage. I don't want to go into how many percentage or what percentage of this town as part of the master plan review was really pushing open space. And um, that was what the, the townspeople wanted. And we had an opportunity for an open space purchase in this town. And the leadership chose to ignore what a large percentage of the town asked for. So in my mind... Putting this master plan out is useless because the leadership's not going to listen to it. What's the point of doing it? That's my opinion. Again, this is my opinion. I want to say to the board, I'm so frustrated right now of all the time the master plan committee put in, the surveys they did, CMRPC's money, or the money we sent to CMRPC, and then the leadership basically said, no, nah, build more houses. It's exactly what was said, yep. and I'm, I'm frustrated beyond belief. And I will not go to any more selectman meeting. Yeah, so I'm all done. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to discount just, anything so. the, the master plan committee did because I think it was an excellent effort. I was part of it. Mm -hmm. Didn't always agree, but what the majority wants, I agree with and will support. But yeah. this is what's come up. 
lately I'm I'm beyond irritated with because the town spoke and now it's not being listened to. So I'm I'm frustrated. And I'm telling all the people in here that's that it. That's all I say. If yeah. you own land for Crown Island, get a CR on it before yeah. the conservation Someone restriction. Yeah. Before the state says uh, we're going to uh, rezone your town. <laughs> we're going to move people in on your property. <laughs> and we're going to have people sitting on top of you, whether you think you uh, need them or not, and whether or not you've got room for sewer systems and things like that, which they have no idea. And a lot of that is in here also. <sighs> no idea for crying out loud. They, they, oh, we ought to do this and this. Well, how are you going to get sewer lines? We have sewer lines in this town that were put in in the 30s. Yeah. And they still have not been renewed, updated. Well, we have a bigger problem, Dick. We have one well in this town. (laughs) We have one one water source (laughs) fed reservoir. Yeah. I remember Joe being adamant about we've got to get a second source, and it just never happened. So. And, that's, and after that's critical in my mind. Where River meeting the other night for Grand Loud and what's DCR? Oh, um, they opened up a little bit on the property down there, but they're putting down uh, new rules for a long pond. And in my opinion, the town of Rutland should go to the state and say, and especially right now, we want long pond back. Because it's all spring-fed, and we should have that for a second water source. That could be a second one, yeah. And all you have to do is remove the earth that was put, that rolled down here in the earthquake 1,400 years or 1,500 years ago. <laughs> remove it so the water starts flowing to the Chicopee, and it's out of the way river. Uh, <laughs> I don't see that happening, but it's a good thought. <laughs> well, I have to pass it on because it's not only mine, it was Steve Drawbridge's. Mm. Too. Okay. Right. So anyway, okay. We're, we're canceling tomorrow night's meeting. Yes. All right. Yes. I think so. I don't think yeah. we need a motion. I just think we need a consensus. Mm-hmm. So I far, say yes. So far, three. I think I said yes, but I'm not yeah. sure. Um, just to say a couple things in in the the packet. Um, it says an implement implementation team. Is that, you know, something that that's gonna? That's good. It's a lot of work to to. Get everybody on board with that. Well, it'd be interesting. Who is the team? Yeah, and it's it all hasn't been defined. I don't think. Yeah, it hasn't been defined. Which it. no, but it mentions it. Yeah. When you go through the implementation element of it, remember, this board adopts the master plan. Right. So this board can determine what the implementation team should look like. It does mention like one from planning, one from select board, one from this, one from that. Maybe like maybe that. we should uh, modify that to make it clear and concise. It's a good point. Yeah, I like, like that. Yeah. Good point, Keith. To, I like that. Imp, you know, to hopefully foster good good right. things from. That's it. one. No, ninety nine more by the time we have. Okay. Our yeah. Meeting. I know yeah. you got ninety. You've <laughs> earned your one year's keeps, and I got four <laughs> more, buddy. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, Stonewall Hillside Road. Uh, apparently, after uh, reading Chris's notes, yeah. I don't know. Craze. I'd scratch it. I just, I don't know. It, somehow or other, still just kind of looked to me like they had, as I said, they kicked the small rocks out of the stone wall. Yeah. That's why I was struggling when I read this. I'm yeah. going, like, I've driven by it, and it, this report doesn't match what I'm, my eyes are seeing. Yeah. Again, I. I think they're. I got to go with Dave McCray. He's yeah. the uh, building inspector. It's his. He has the authority to yep. make determination. Yep. And so that's why I just like, oh, maybe I don't know what I'm looking at, which is yeah. possible. And what's interesting about a bylaw like this is if it was a zoning bylaw and somebody disagreed with the building commission's interpretation, they could appeal that to ZBA. Mm-hmm. Yes. This. this, I'm not sure where it could be appealed to, if it can be appealed. But I don't think I don't think that's called out in the no, no scenic not. bylaw at all. No, no, no. It's just you have it's enforceable if you do something by the building inspector, but that's it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Most of the stuff has to go through us. Yeah. yeah. And to me, after looking at those rocks or kind of loud, I wasn't overly impressed. Mm-hmm. The size of if if they were big rocks. Yeah. I might have had a different attitude about right. it. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Okay. 
It's all that stuff. Yeah. Well, let me guess. We can't get Kevin out of his office. Oh, probably not. <laughs> Actually, uh, I did to arrive up to Bryce Lemon. Nothing really happening there. Real estate, all kinds of stuff going on. Selling them houses, baby. He's got, I think it's like seven houses in progress. He's in front states. of the con con getting uh, in letters of, I don't know, letters of intent or whatever mm -hmm. it is to. Yeah. He already got all the orders and conditions. Yep, that's yeah. what I, yeah. Yeah. I saw that yeah. coming before him in the yeah. last couple of meetings, so he's. <laughs> and I'm not I, sure if they're working mm -hmm. on sewer and water at the same time, but they're at least doing one or the other down that. Uh, temporary egress, yeah. and they've got it all the way out to Brindle Drive. So he's going to, and he's, Cleese said he was going to cap it there, and uh, I, I guess they had Brindle Drive closed actually for part of today. Yeah, did we not have uh, something about the trail? He In was Brittnell, yeah, that he was supposed to, at the end of the one cul-de-sac, it was supposed to go out, and we're supposed to get a drawing of that being tied together, if I remember right, yeah. Dick. I think we did. I thought he did an update, but I don't remember. Yeah. Probably should pull the plans and look and make sure it's there. Because that was yeah. something that was part of the, if I'm not, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but I thought it was the conditions as part of the. Yeah, I thought it was a condition to rail trail connection. Yeah. I could be wrong. I don't yeah. remember. With what? Brittnell? Brittnell. It's Brittnell yeah. Estates, uh, the one that is off at Grizzly. Um, at, off of one of the cul-de-sacs, it was close to the rail trail, yeah. and the board had asked for do a little connection at the end of the cul-de-sac to the rail trail so the people in that area could just go over to the rail trail and jump on it and walk it. Yeah, around the swamp? Yep. Yeah. Is it the, okay. Well, yeah, that'd be nice for those people. It yeah. doesn't look like much of a swamp lately. Yeah. It's more like a good-sized lake. lake. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That would be this year's rain. And also, a couple of weeks ago, it smelled like a swamp. Like a sewer. Oh, yeah. Ooh, bad. That would be the methane gas finding its way out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Beer Hill 2, nothing. That's Almost sold out. <laughs> it was built out. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And future agenda items, uh, I'm assuming we still can do the uh, next way on October 10th. The question I had on that, and maybe this is for Tamika Richard. I looked at the plans that were out there, and nothing's as built. It's all dated. God knows how many years ago. Okay. I'd really like as built to go into the files for Nate's way. Like if there was something changed, if there was something added, if something ch there was no good point. Th th there was no as built for those drawings. Are labeled as built? No, yeah. that's my problem. Yeah. And I, I really want as built in our file. Yeah. Sorry, I just I caught that when I was looking at the dates. I'm going like. I think it was 2014 or something yeah. like that. I go, yeah, that's a little old. Is it the town lease of performance guarantees on it? <laughs> God. I don't know. Because this thing is so old. Yeah. It's a long time ago. It dates back to, what, 2005, I think, the original plans? Yeah. I thought it was 14, but I can't remember. I, I looked at them, um, and I would just... So, so the original plan was dated, I think, December 9th, 2005. And um, I have been working with Kevin and uh, Kevin Quinn and Dave Lucier because he's finishing up the last of the punch items on that yeah. report from April. And then he's working with Kevin to schedule a final inspection so he can provide a report to you guys for your October 10th meeting. Can we ask... Dave and Kevin, if the plans with the punch list on them, if somebody could as built those and submit them to the planning board as as built, that's what I guess I'd ask for. Yeah. As built is as built is the final document showing how that how that was constructed. Okay. So if there was Make any sure. change, like if they moved a driveway one way, or or if they drainage drainage, or if they move a fire hydrant, yes, put over versus. Yeah. yeah it's and, just and the reason I ask you was stamped. I've, yeah. I had a developer spend as pills one time where the surveyor took the approved plans and just stamped, stamped them as built. Oh, man. Oh. And nobody lose. looked at it because they switched the fire hydrants from one side of the road to the other. He can, lose his, he can lose his stamp over that. Yeah. And <laughs> so that they took those back and, and then actually did. 
as built. No, that was the only idea. thing I wanted yeah. to do. Is to I know it's that. old, but I, I'd no. like to get the as built in the file. Yes. Yeah, we should have. Does that show up with every subdivision? Yes. Should, yes. Yeah. Okay. That's so part of the final the before it gets approved as a road. Yeah. Okay. Those they, they do go out and do the checklist to make sure everything's there, and then those drawings should be as built and submitted back to the planning it, board. It should be done before the final performance guarantee is released. Are we sure we don't have them? No. No. Has no. anybody looked in the file? And by the same token, I am not sure if he even bonded that. You got a good point. I that's, don't know. That's almost before my time. I can't remember. Yeah. Because that wasn't ago. Blair. It, it oh, was. Oh. Oh, we have a. a resident Step himself. into our office, oh, genius, oh, master. Peter Crane and I, I live on Nate's Way. If it's a 2014 drawing, it's an as built. That's the first time that he tried to bring it before the town and things got backed up and never completed. I was one of, I was the last house to be occupied and I moved in in 2008. All right. I, I, I don't want to say t uh, yeah. 2014 I could be wrong. I just I It I've sounds like the right time frame because he's been doing all the plowing and all the maintenance and Yeah. And the wow. road was repaved after 2014. <laughs> I just think it's simple enough since they're doing the checklist right now and going through and yeah. doing all the approvals to get it. Just as built those drawings as they sit now and submit them to the board. Be so, done with this. So if there are as built in the file, you don't want those. You want something else. Well, if he's no. making changes or anything there's, to it now, if there's as built in the file. They uh, make changes to it. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that, that's the, that's what we've got. If they're going through a checklist and there's changes on that checklist with Kevin's mm -hmm. finding, those aren't as built. No. no, no, there weren't changes on his checklist. If you recall, it was things like cleaning out the catch basins, cleaning out the detention basins. Yeah, that's um, all it should be. If the, if all they're right. doing is stop the sign. Right, yeah. they weren't no. changes to the roadway. Well, then I'm fine if, if, but the drawings I looked at um, were, the, I look at the rev, rev block and it said construction or something like that, or, right. or it didn't have as built because usually the last rev you put right. in there is as built. Or and that they wasn't there. Say in big letters at the top as built. So if we've got, again, Tamika, I just looked at the drawing set that I don't know where the heck it was in our packet or something or in, on the, on, no, Nate's way. It was on the select board's um, discussion. They actually put the Nate way drawings in that. Uh, I did, yeah, I did put those up there. Yep, um, and I looked at them and they weren't as built. But I haven't looked in the file to confirm if we have okay. the as built or if not. If we do, we that's may great. have them. If we do, I'm excited. But the ones the select board has up right now are not as built. We'll have to check on that yep. before the 10th. Good enough. That's right. it. Um, I said. Thanks, Peter. Wherever you are. Yes. Glenn, you've been sitting there. Yeah. And, and I tried to throw in the third bylaw, or, or, or the third bylaw we were trying to fix. Well, my, my question back to the standalone energy. Um, so there is not going to be a public hearing? On the 10th? Or October 10th? No. No. Okay. no. We don't even have a bylaw, as far as I'm concerned, ready to go. Not even have a public not even, hearing. Not even close. Yeah. <clears throat> I would say if, if I was a betting man, public hearing sometime March, a couple months before the town meeting. And again, don't hold me to the timeline, but that's my guess. Mm -hmm. so I say the advertise here in the tenth was a placeholder. Placeholder in case this one this was ready to go, but no. And I'm not sure that I followed the tier three standalone facility. Is there a max capacity on that? Utilities will tell you no. They'll they'll build them as big as they can put. I don't think there'll ever be a tier three in Rutland because that's more of a utility grade, like you're putting it next to a transfer station. I, I don't think anybody will ever build in a town more than 10 megawatts or 5 megawatts. Uh, I just Well, I, I just read about... Um, Midway has a 250 megawatt. Jeez. That's a power plant. I mean, that's probably on six or seven well, acres. If it's not. supposed to cover 80% of New England's needs up to 2,000. <laughs> 250 megawatts ain't even going to come close. No. That doesn't even cover well, I, I Shrewsbury. <laughs> I know. Well, trust me. They make the claims. But I, if being from the utility, there's no way. Uh, 250 megawatts, my God, that was a 
mini power plant back in the day. <laughs> I mean, Some Canal sense. Electric just added a fourth station. I didn't even know about third or fourth station um, down at Canal Electric, and uh, it's a nice put it on put it on 16 acres <clears throat> and a gas turbine that's a 350 megawatt plant. Really? Yeah, I was like, well, I got 16 acres. I could say for yeah. a 350 megawatt plant. But, and I know, but it's gas turbine, so it's it's a high efficient power plant. No, it's too bad. But I want, really, I want, so 250 megawatts, huh? I want that's a chip huge. plant. Oh my God, that's <laughs> big. But I, I guess I should say never say never. Yeah. You, when you approach your the bottle, you can either put a cap on it. Or, and this would be my approach, or instead of putting a cap on it, I'd put dimensional size uh, requirements so that for somebody to put a large one out there, they may have to have 15 acres and yeah. to have open space and buffering so it isn't yeah. right next to houses. Uh, so yeah. that'd be my well, approach. Yeah. Well, with all the cooling too, and all of the systems, <laughs> something that leaves is not it's yeah. not quiet. And not only that, for kind of a lot, of, I saw that in there. And to me, how come nobody mentions anything about wildlife, or or water, or vernal pools, or anything? How do you know unless you you've got to put that stuff in there for them to check? Yeah, you wouldn't want it. Near I think that's what what Tom was saying in 2016. That's why they. The, the state handed, and I hate saying this terminology, but free money out to try to try them out and see what the issues are. It's sort of like a test run or... Yeah, um, but I'm just saying, uh, you know, if there's a vernal pool near it, uh, you can't touch it within 100 well, I feet. Don't, I don't know how DCR would handle that by putting a, putting a battery container next to a uh, wetlands. Yes. So I don't know how that's going to be handled. That's... That's the guy in the other room. <laughs> well, I'm thinking like uh, Putnam up there if they had because— uh, Oh, in their solar field? That solar field. He's got a lot of wetlands behind that, doesn't yes. he? Yes. Yes. Remember right now? Try to— I don't know. It sounds like that's going to be a good well, challenge for the uh, bylaw subcommittee to yes. make sure we cover our I's and dot our T's or reverse that. Uh, there, there is provisions in there that you could add to to talk about. Uh, uh, conservation areas and yep. endangered species and those type of considerations. But I think, like I said earlier, there's to me there's going to be a lot of collaboration with different, at least in my mind, from the bylaw subcommittee with the fire chief, with the conservation yeah. commission. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, that's discussions. I don't know. There's a lot to go through, yeah. Right. I know it's a zoning bylaw, but and still. Let me tell you, uh, another thing I want to get cranking on here soon. Is number three, bylaw number three for the lad in the back. The lad in the back. I want to see that. So help me. Before I'm not able to walk anymore, I want to make sure that's up and running. Uh, the what? The, the industrial. Industrial. Yes. Let me ask a yeah, question. That, that's gonna, there's going to be some competition there. For what? Well, between solar and that. No, you don't have any solar fields near your thing, though. No, oh, I which, mean the solar bylaw. Well, the solar bylaw, yeah. I, I feel that we still yeah, we can gotta, work on two. We've got to work on it. Might ahead. be an ambitious. Yeah, yeah. I like to say it's somehow or other we're gonna have to divide it up. I did eight or nine in one year one before. So I mean, well, the yeah. thing I was thinking about <laughs> is is some some somebody and maybe Richard, this is you to. For the bylaw that we were working on for the industrial, got to find Dave's file and pull that and make sure John gets it in his hands right off the bat. Yeah. Because that's the one thing I'll give Dave. He was damn good at keeping files on stuff. Yeah. I went to that file, and I'm pulling out site plans. Everything's there in order, dated. Oh, those were nice to see. Good. He did a great job of that. So that's it for me. All right. So what are we going to do for a meeting room if they're going to suck up that other one? Who's going to be going in there? I don't know where the bylaws are. resources coordinator, mm -hmm. but working on getting space at the community center, and I'm working on the ramp at the woods. Well, not me personally, but trying to get the ramp at the woods studio taken care of so that that's a meeting space as well. But unfortunately, we just don't have enough space for our new staff. So I we're think using the woods studio would work very well. 
It doesn't have it doesn't have internet. That's my big well, that's problem. All, no, I don't have problem with that. I do because I can't get access to anything when I want to go look it up in a meeting when when I have to make sure my facts wires. are correct. Yeah. I tell you, one of the things in the master plan, it's I, I, I still say to this day, for crying out loud, this town better start thinking outside of the bounds and start thinking about a brand new community hall, senior center combined, one floor, no elevators involved, or something <laughs> like that. You can also reserve space here as well. There's nothing to stop you guys from meeting here. Yeah. Um, I can um, look at the calendar and see what's going on. And yeah, that's what we're going to have to think day. about. Yeah. Is there another door behind these? <laughs> the Wizard of Oz is behind this curtain. Oh! Here, but... <laughs> <laughs> and then we need to think about okay. whatever we're going to do. What are we going to do with that big TV that's ours? Where are we going to put it? <laughs> we used it, I mean... Uh, Marilyn used it when we were doing Zoom meetings and then also, you know, to bring up drawings and maps. I mean, that was okay. great. But where yeah. the heck are we going to put that now? I talked to Austin. It's going to stay where it is for now. There's nowhere else to put yeah, it. And it is it. town property. So. Uh, it's actually planning board property because we paid for it out of our revolving fund. I couldn't find any evidence of that. Becky will find it. It was a receipt to me. <laughs> and I don't have a lot of receipts from the town. She'll find my expense account that I uh, did because <laughs> this young lad over here approved it. So she'll find it because um, they paid it directly to me because I went and got a good price with Dell on that one. And then, uh, um, so she'll find it. So I just don't know what we're going to do with it. That's the, because we had, because that was sort of our room. TV. Yeah, I just... <laughs> Just kidding. I mean, it was good for drawings to bring it up when we had big drawings. Oh, is it yeah. a flat screen or? It's flat screen. Flat yeah. screen, yeah. How many 65 inches? 65 inches. 60, well, yeah, it, was a, it was a big one. Nice, too. You guys have the option of doing that in here and in the Calkins room as well, because there's a screen in the Calkins room. Yeah. Just has to have cameras, right? For the, or it's not a public hearing, or it is. Well, that one has no cameras. See, that's the key, it, or I shouldn't say key. Well, it's key for this lad. No. <laughs> There's no cameras, but uh, what we had was uh, you bring in a it, You could you could hook it up to either the laptop or to the uh, desktop there, and then bring up hmm. drawings, which that happened in a couple of the. Uh, bylaw subcommittees that Maryland was running. But anyhow, we can figure that out, Don. It's not something that's going to be figured out overnight. I liked it because no cameras, no recordings, and farmers could say a lot of dirty I guess, things. <laughs> to me, and it's a question, I guess, I don't know, Norm, if you've asked Austin, if we're going to get an, an, an admin for our planner, where is he or she going to sit? That's we a good question. That out, yeah. Okay, good enough. I don't. I don't. I don't need to play it. I just was thinking about it. I'm going like, we've subdivided everything up. I think these uh, town administrators got to give up some space. Let's vote on that tonight. <laughs> that couch needs to go. Yeah, I don't. I don't or the think attic of the public safety building. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've got that in here too for crying out loud. Yes, I tell you that the um, last town administrator I worked for, when he came there, he had an office about the size of Austin's. And he had that divided up, and he moved into someone else's office that was the size of the room I'm in. Because he said, I don't need a big office. We need fowls. We need a building maintenance person. We need a management, building management person, his assistant. And have you seen that conference room yeah. where we have stuff? That's where our first town administrator's office that was. <laughs> that was, that that was first, Margaret's yeah. office, yeah. And that's when Planning Board and CONCOM filled the space that is currently the building inspector. Building inspector. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> yeah. in fact, before that, it was open space. That was all open to the outside. Yeah, they put in yep. a wall. Because that's where the select board met. And Tamika's office, when I first started, was where the planning board actually met yep. and had files back in the day. Yep. When I first started with the board. And then we got moved and walls went up and um, Margaret came on board and then she just took that little space in the back. Yep. And uh, and then Jackie had the space where the planning and the Come. conservation agent is right now. Mm -hmm. So I can't mm -hmm. remember. Oh, the select board had their whole office where... Austin's office where is Austin right is, now. Yeah, Actually, yeah. where Tamika's is now. Oh, they took that over? 
where Tamika is located now used to be the complete select board office. I don't think because building used to be what is now Austin's. Yeah. And then yes, you're right. took yeah. over Austin, made yeah. his office Austin. Yeah. Our soon-to-be president of the U.S. made that office huge. Yes. Way back when, planning yeah. board met upstairs in the town hall. In the town hall, yes, Are you we talking did. about the one that does this upstairs? Yes. <laughs> it was the stage at <laughs> the, the dance, end. The yeah. dance stage that uh, has a little wave to yeah, it. Yeah. Roller coaster yeah. floors. Yep. Yeah, I've heard about it. <clears throat> Never been up there because... This body's not going on a floor like that. <laughs> it smells like history up there. It does. It does. Like it smells really like George Washington. Yeah, yeah. I'm uh, something no. about it. Yeah, I'm, you remember in, like, George when he came through the door one time? Yeah. yeah, like in the heat of the summer, yeah. you can I'm, just like, I've already smell it. heard about our building inspector going through the historic <laughs> building roof. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be that second story in Rutland. That story that gets out. Yeah, the planning board guy fell through the floor. I'm like, no. Oh. I will entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> what time is it, please? 45. 45. Aye. 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 Aye.